Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Pinewood Hills where my very creaky chair announces the start of a new area. First of all, if you enjoy this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to see, uh, and you'd like to see, like more is what I was going to say. If you'd like to see lots more creative gaming, don't forget to click subscribe. Okay, so uh, phase two is done. And what I mean by Phase 2, that is the uh, the original 40s area, 60s and 70s expansions that both Ruble and Mass Bandit have been working on uh, with myself, and also the campsite as well. A little bit rough around the edges, but overall I feel like it's a good time to get it out onto the workshop. So, tomorrow will be the official release. There's going to be a video going up with a link and a, a folder with all the blue billboards in and all that sort of stuff, so you can get your hands on Pinewood Hills and see how we get on. But that doesn't stop us cracking on with the build, and we're starting Gulpy Lands. Now this is something I've been talking about for quite a long time actually. Something I've been really looking forward to getting into the park because it's a bit different uh, to what I've seen other people do in Planet Coaster and uh, also it's a little bit different to the rest of uh, the stuff I've been doing as well. So uh, I'm really struggling, struggling with the paths here. I don't know if you can tell but the queues just for some reason just constantly showed that they were blocked. So we had to um, change the, the plan a little bit here. I'll be honest with you originally uh, I wanted this to be a really big, just flat concrete area with very little going on other than the flats all plonked down. Uh, very similar if you've been to Blackpool Pleasure Beach to Nickelodeon Land. It's a huge space that they've just leveled out basically and they've stuck down about six or seven, maybe even more flat rides uh, in a very small space. I mean, literally, um, you know, uh, maybe a quarter of a mile all round bang all these flats are there and it's a kids area uh, obviously based on uh, Nickelodeon IP so there's a fairly fairy odd parents ride there's a Dora the Explorer ride uh, Spongebob um, other ones that I don't really know you know obviously kids are a big fan of them uh, and that's what I was going to do and that's what this red concrete is here I drop it out of the way so I can see what's going on but uh, eventually I realized it doesn't really work like that it just it's very tricky to do in the game these large expanses of path especially that the flats just sit on uh, because it's the only pretty much the only collision that you can't get rid of in the game is the flat ride collision with the paths uh, and I totally understand why it would send the guests crazy I imagine if they could walk through um, so instead we're gonna have it a little bit more themed a little bit more something like CBB's Land at Alton Towers uh, something like that where, where actually the theming is pretty impressive really for what it is now uh, the big idea behind Gulpy Land is one of those uh, kids areas developed through an IP so obviously you know Alton Towers has CBeebies uh, there's a Peppa Pig world um, uh, like I said Blackpool has Nickelodeon uh, Thomas Land there's one from Thomas the Tank Engine I forget where a lot of these are because having only a very young son these are all very new to me but I'm soon I'm going to be learning just learning about all of them I'm sure uh, but yeah these sort of uh, you know the IP themed areas usually lots of flats suitable for kids and uh, they're really great influxes of cash they sort of um, really pummel cash into the park very quickly so they get these really nicely themed areas to be honest with you that using a lot of sort of fiber fiberglass uh, structures and um, stuff that they just wouldn't be able to afford otherwise and that's kind of what we're going for here with Gulpy Land so we're making Gulpy out to be a bit of a sort of Barney the Dinosaur type character maybe he has his own channel a bit a little, little bit like um, oh god what's the name of the calf in um, Dogma they have a little golden car that they all that they all have on TV and everything. I can't remember what it's called now. You'll, somebody will tell me in the comments, I'm sure. Uh, but that kind of idea, you know, this big conglomerate now. Uh, Gulpy started off as a little kids show, and now he's got drinks and all sorts named after him. And there's other sort of TV shows and characters involved. That's kind of what we're going for here now. Uh, first of all, here's one I made earlier, by the way, the Gulpy statue. I know you probably didn't see that happen on uh, on video just then. I made that a while ago actually, when I was um, having a bit of a uh, oh, excuse me for knocking the microphone. I have a bit of a mental block, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to completely change it up. I forget whereabouts I was working, but I decided to completely change it up and uh, and start working on something completely different. So I made a gulpy statue, knowing that I would need one when we started working on this area. Uh, so that's that's that. It starts there. It moves around about four or five times till I find where he goes, to be honest with you. And I may look at making a few others, uh, although I probably won't look at doing any of the other in-game characters. Uh, I'm not too sure yet where, where it's going to go. Like I say, my, my, my idea of what this originally was when I sat down to start building it on the morning, I, I normally have like one day a week where I just sit and play Planko. So what I had in my head on the morning was very much like Nickelodeon Land at Blackpool. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what I've ended up with is a, is a lot more like uh, Steve Eby's Land at Alton Towers. They're the two parks that I know the best so 
that's what I'm basing my references on a lot of times. So um, a lot of this is I'm kind of sort of winging it really because, uh, like I say, it kind of, it's kind of shifted from what I originally had in my head. This sign is very, uh, very similar to the sort of stuff you get at, at Blackpool. Um, very lightly themed, to be honest with you, and mostly just sort of signage and uh, pictures of Gulpi, and then the rest is relatively serviceable. But as it goes on, it actually gets a little bit more themed inside. So I'm trying to do a little bit of a mix of the two, using these awesome. Uh, lights from the uh, from the studios pack this is now what I'm trying to get to here I don't know if you've seen them I don't know what they would call them but there are lots of lights that you get in these kind of areas or also indoors in play areas that they kind of show shapes on the ground or, or patterns or, or things like that so there might be like waves or um, you know flowers or things like that you have to get them at discos kids discos or kids play areas and stuff like that that's kind of what I was going for here so uh, we use those and all we, we obviously we can't make patterns but uh, we can change the colours, so we've made some cool colours there. To be honest with you, it goes back to daytime in a minute and you never see them again, but it's nice to know they're there, hey. <laughs> uh, doing a bit of cheat lighting underneath there just to get the uh, the Gulpy Land logo set up. And then this uh, this whole area is going to be fenced off, the idea being that it's a little bit safer to have your kids run around in. Um, so the only sort of they're the three entrances into this area, and the whole thing is going to be fenced. So that obviously, you know, you're not you're not going to be leaving your kids alone. But they're the the sort of exits are covered in a little bit, and um, you know you're a little bit more secure with uh, with where your kids go in the area. That's kind of the the idea there. So rather than have a very free form flowing areas like we have already in Pinewood, uh, this is very much a this whole thing was built in one go, bang. Gulpy land, it, it, the area was leveled out and this was placed down there, uh, like most kids' areas usually are done in parks, from what I can tell. Uh, or sometimes kids' areas are, are, um, are kind of uh, retrofitted onto older areas. For instance, at Blackpool, they do have some of the older coasters that they've repainted uh, and rebranded under Nick. So there's the Nickelodeon streak. Uh, which which originally was just I think it was just called Roller Coaster to be honest for a long time, and also the um, oh go on the little zipper or little dipper or something like that again is is sort of painted up now to be part of the Nickelodeon land. Uh, but those are actually very old wooden coasters that have been there for many, many years. So sometimes they are sort of retrofitted onto areas, but a lot of the time when a new IP comes along, uh, they kind of level a space out and the whole thing is just one big influx of cash uh, that gets dumped down. Here I had a little bit of trouble figuring out how to get this path around the, um, the signage here. I end up going for uh, a mix of this lovely wooden, I think it's one of the fairy tale pieces, this lovely coloured wooden uh, fence that wouldn't really be able to use much anywhere else, especially coloured like this. It's actually, you can recolour it to be brown and I might start using that a bit more often. I didn't realise it could be recoloured. Um, but as these colours, it's something you're not going to be able to use very often. And so I've gone from a combination of those and then some chain link fence where it's a little bit more uh, needed to be secure, sort of around that signage there to stop kids climbing up. And that's another thing I wanted to try and get across this area. This isn't Disney. You know, this isn't where every single ex ex tiny corner and dustbin... Uh, and bench and everything are completely well themed and the and the uh, toilets sing to you and things like that um, so we do there are going to be areas that are a little ropey and they're, and they're sort of more form over function um, or function over form even should I say so that's kind of what I wanted to go for there with the, uh, the juxtaposition of those two fences and hopefully it comes across if it doesn't it might just look a little bit random that I've used chain link there but you know what, what can you do in my head it all makes perfect sense <laughs> Um, so yeah, this uh, this fence piece, I love it. I'm going to definitely start using this a little bit more often. Like I said, I didn't realise it could be recoloured. In fact, we do recolour it on the uh, the one ride that we get to theme today. We don't get the complete area finished here, by the way. Uh, but the one ride we do get to theme, we actually use a recoloured version of this fence. And um, there's going to be another episode of Gulpy Land. And also, just the outside of Gulpy Land, tied into it, but its own separate area, uh, we're going to have a stage where there's going to be a... A gulpy show of some description so uh, a, a staged area uh, with some simple seating again still very budget conscious this isn't going to be Wembley or anything you know it's going to be a small stage with sort of um, speakers and a few bits of lighting and things like that but nothing crazy and it's going to be for the gulpy show that happens a few times a day um, you know costume characters come out and dance along to a to an audio track or you know mime along to uh, some audio so that's going to be the uh, the kind of the idea there 
So when I realised that we didn't have a large concrete area, each of these little bits where the um, where the path meets the terrain paint of the concrete here needs to kind of have its own reason to be there, else it just looks a bit weird when it's uh, with its own colour. So with that in mind, there's going to be a few of these little areas. So this is a, a first one. This is a little, a very little playground, more of a sort of sensory area, I guess you would call it, for very little kids who maybe still can't fit on the rides, but their brothers and sisters can, you know, dad can bring them over here while mom goes on the ride or vice versa, so uh, that's what I wanted to do here, and I wanted to try and theme it a little bit to the ride that it's near, which is the Whirly Gig, that will eventually be uh, Captain Lockjaw's Whirly Gig, well, the, uh, the pirate character from in the game. So here we've built a, a little bit of a Loch Ness I go and put those triangles on and then realise that they would they would take a kid's eye out, so instead we, we go for some uh, shapes here. So it isn't really a true playground, we don't have um, swings or slides or anything like that, it is more of a toddler sensory park, you know, they can come around and feel the, feel the funny shapes and climb over things and all that kind of thing, that's, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Uh, so we have that awesome... Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Loch Ness, I think he's turned out really quite well. Uh, and then the actual, the only sort of real, uh, I don't know what you'd call it really, piece of equipment is this very tiny little roundabout. Um, I'm not sure what they call these in other places. I'm, I'm guessing they don't call them roundabouts in the States. Um, I can't think what we really call them proper names. No? Okay. Answers on a postcard, please. What do you call this thing? It's it's basically a thing that kids sit in and it spins around. So it's a very little one. Again, this area is completely made for toddlers who can't fit on the roller coaster. Or can't fit on the rides, basically. Uh, talking of roller coasters, people have asked me whether there's going to be a gulpy coaster. Um, I'm not sure. There could be. Uh, we could do a small kiddie coaster, like a, a big apple caterpillar type thing. Um, as in caterpillar going through the apple, not the Monteleone thing in the game. So I don't know really, uh, answers on a postcard really, so whether you'd like to see a kid, a proper kids coaster. Uh, it could be done, and um, yeah, maybe, maybe we will actually, to be fair. Uh, here's a scenario that they can sort of step on, or sometimes they have large uh, noughts and crosses games, or tic-tac-toe, that sort of thing. And then, and then finally we just have some shapes that the kids can climb on. So again, all sort of soft play there, the, the ground would be sort of tar like padded tarmac, that sort of squishy tarmac you get in kids areas. And then um, I go through and I change the path. Uh, that that blue one is, although it's quite kiddie, it's just a little bit too far fetched. It wouldn't. It would look awful that blue path would after a better week. Uh, so instead, we go for this nice sort of red red tarmac instead. And then we start working on um, on the first sort of proper themed ride, which is this uh, magic twirl. The other good thing I really like about this Gulpy area is that you, we can get to use some of the rides that we probably wouldn't use otherwise, these sort of very heavily themed uh, rides, but these are great um, because even in the relatively um, budget parks, the, the, the kids themed area, they, they really do go all out with the budget. So again, go and have a little look online at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, you know, all intents and purposes, very low themed park. Not that it's budget necessarily, it's one of the large parks in the UK, but uh, because of the space they have, they're relatively low theming. But if you walk around the Nickelodeon area, like every single ride has got characters and uh, custom cars and things like that. So, yeah, definitely get away with, uh, with a bit more theming here. So, we've decided on the Magic Twirl and the whirly gig that obviously lend themselves to the theme, theme, theming and then the other one i've placed down is actually the um uh, i forget what it's called in the game but it's basically like the american waltzers chair chair spin spin o chair or something i don't know what they call it in the game i can't remember um hyper spin or something like that maybe i can't remember it's kind of like um kind of like a waltzers that's open uh, and i purposely put that one down so we can have we can actually theme one of the rides it's going to be themed western uh, around um uh, oh, I forget her name there, the, the western character in the game. She's awesome. Jessie. No, not Jessie. Uh, oh, it's something like Jessie, isn't it? Oh, God, really having a mental blank on that one. She was awesome. We, we built a whole area around uh, Ellie, Miss Ellie, that's it. So we built a whole area around it in our very first park. Um, so this one is based around the witch. I see we've placed the witch on the way in there. And all the animatronics we've used, they have been turned to stationary because although, you know, the theming is a little higher here, uh, they don't really have the budget for uh, outdoor animatronics that constantly move and, and animate and have smoke blowing at them and things like that. So um, the statue of the uh, the witch there and also the drats that we placed down and this uh, cottage here, 
all the uh, all the animatronics are turned off they're just static pieces and actually that would make them relatively cheap these are just fiberglass structures they're all custom made but they're fiberglass structures the only one i left on because i have to leave it on is the cauldron here but again a little bit of a smoke machine underneath it it'd be relatively cheap to run um and uh, and look at but then with this high level of theming, I really wanted to sort of drag the budget back in and really sort of drag the realism back in. So there we use a lot of bushes and things to kind of make it a little bit overgrown. It's not quite as cared for as well as it could. These were probably about five or ten years old by the time um, we're looking at the park, I guess. Uh, so we make sure that um, it's a little bit overgrown. We have the drats there, but like I said, we've turned them off. And then the other thing we do... Uh, with this area is cover it in some signage again signage is a really cheap way to theme an area you see a lot of this around in theme parks uh, very sort of funny signs and things like that originally that area was going to be a graveyard uh, akin to uh, a lot of haunted houses around the place they have funny gravestones you know um, you know things like here lies here lies william heap was six foot tall now six foot deep you know that kind of thing um so, uh, but I decided against that because this is quite a young ride, really. Um, haunted houses, you know, you're going in expecting to be scared a little. Uh, the idea of graves and and, and dead dead people, I suppose, it, it, it's relatively okay to deal with. But here, you know, it's it's little drats being pulled pulled round on sleigh bells. So, uh, this show. Um, that it's based on again, like I say, that all the characters here they're going to be. It's going to be as if it's a TV area. So uh, the show here is kind of. I'm thinking a little bit like Wurzel Gummidge. I'm probably showing my age a little bit there. If any of you remember Wurzel Gummidge, there was a there was a witch on that. And oh my word, I can't remember what her name was now. I've got the worst mental block today with names and things, aren't I? Um, but yeah, kind of like that. A funny funny old witch who you know has probably has a cat that winds her up and, and things like that. So even though it's a little spooky, uh, the the you know, it's actually quite light in uh, in its material. That's kind of what we've gone for, and hopefully that is reflected in the name. Uh, we've called it Granny Nose Waxes, um, a, a broom spin. That's it. Now I know that you don't ride on brooms; you ride on little sleighs. But I thought broomstick, broom spin, it just kind of worked pretty well, to be honest. So Granny Nose Waxes broom spin is the name of the ride, uh, and because this area can be sort of entered a couple of different ways. Uh, we replace the sign on both sides to kind of give uh, to give a, a bit of a weenie to the area. Really, this it's probably going to be the tallest structure. Uh, and um, again, I, I, it's it's very themed. But I think if you if you think of it as a large fiberglass structure, as opposed to an actual hut that's been built, then that's kind of the level of theming that we're going for in this area. Really. Uh, so again, a bit, little bit of signage over here. I don't know what took me so long then. No, can't figure out what took me that long. So here we're just kind of keeping, uh, you know, light colours, sort of, um, you know, spooky colours, purples, oranges, blacks, that kind of thing. But I didn't want to just keep it all brown. Uh, and then we just fill out a bit of fencing around the back here and, uh, and, and plant some actual trees. I know we've used some of the, the spooky trees there. Again, it's all just stuff that you couldn't really use anywhere else. It, you couldn't really use it. Uh, anywhere other than this area where where an IP has come along an outside corporate company and basically just injected cash into an area because um, it's going to be a great bit of advertising for them it's going to be a great way to tie in uh, competitions and stuff you know they can bring kids down here win, win prizes to meet the characters and things like that so uh, they're really great bits of PR for production companies I can totally understand why why most kids areas especially are themed there I have no real problem with theming areas I think they look pretty good uh, IP areas I, I, if it gets new rides in parks uh, and it has to have a TV show stuck to it it's fine by me uh, last but not least then again we have to make these little areas their own thing so here we turn this one into a small picnic area uh, with a couple of, of course, uh, gulpy vending machines because this is a gulpy area so we've got to get all that corporate money in there, haven't we? There we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help at the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries or suggestions, you can pop them down in the comments. If you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. And if you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link for that in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.